I need a new nut. Welcome to this Greek workshop. My name is Yuchol. I'm restoring a Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder and one of the things that I can make is a new leaf screw nut. It is pretty well worn. Unfortunately, I don't have an Acme internal threading tool, so we're going to make that today. Unfortunately, the nut is pretty worn. It has probably about 50 thou play. The lee screw has some wear, but it's not nearly as bad. So we're going to have to make a new nut. In order to do that, we need an internal Acme threading tool. So we're going to use these W1 tool steel to make one. We'll make it so we can put various size high speed steel uh, blanks on there and we can use it for Acme threading, normal internal threading, a boring, so you can use a boring bar or other, an internal grooving, whatever I need to do. So you can barbecue it, boil it, brawl it, bake it, saute it, days on shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried. It'll be pretty flexible. Machining a Tony Thaw flat spot on top for a red string. Edge finder will help us locate the center and proper distance from the end. I will include a hand sketch at the end of this video so if you choose to make one it will help you but please note it's a hand sketch so you're going to have to deal with my chicken scratch. The top half will get a clearance diameter hole and the bottom will be tapped and it will be evident as to why later in the video. The small bar will be tapped for 1024 screw and the bigger bar will get tapped for quarter 20. And someone forgot to tighten the chuck properly. The small bar will utilize 8th inch and 3 16 inch bits whereas bigger bar will utilize 3 16 and quarter inch high speed steel bits. I'm using a 3 8 inch end mill to countersink for the head of the screws. We'll put the stop back in the vise with the flat we machined against the fixed jaw device. This is where having wider parallels would have made the job easier. I think I'm going to have to make some. We need to find the center and edge of the bar again, but because we machined a flat spot, we can't use a half function on the DRO. So we find the edge and enter in half the diameter and we're there. A nice spot drill ensures that we place the hole exactly where we need them. Throughout this project, I'm undersizing all of the holes by about 4,000 so I can come back with a reamer for that nice tight fit. Did you hear that squeak? This dummy turned the spindle in reverse. We'll be slitting this in half and we don't want to leave a square edge because that's where stress cracks will occur. So we're going to be drilling a stress relief hole all the way through. Other than slitting the end, this side is all done. So we want to machine this side and do the same thing. The only difference is the hole. We're going to use a different diameter so we can use different size uh, high speed steel bit. 
Now the challenge is that we need to be able to register this back on the milling machine so that flat top wing machine is parallel with the table of the uh, mill. So to do that, we're going to set this down, flat side down on these blocks. And we're going to use this tool. This is called Rose Index. It has a machined end here where there's a pocket and the set screw holds uh, the rounded part so that you can register off these edges. This side, there are other angles there so you can uh, divide into eight or six uh, sided uh, circles. So now, but we can't put this this way because, well, remember we have a flat spot machine there, so it won't register in this pocket very well. So we're going to have to put it this way. Just like that. And we're back at the mill to register. We just use a square, put it against the rose index, make sure it's sitting on the table, and we just tighten the vise. Good to go. Oh. This is a four inch sling saw. It is pretty coarse. You typically want uh, three or more teeth engagement, but I'm only getting two on this one. But sometimes you gotta run with what you got, so we're gonna send it. There's a video where I made this sling style arbor. I put a link to it up there somewhere. Looking awesome. We just have to do the same thing on three other ends of the bars, but I'll save you the grief of having to watch me do it. I know there are three of you out there ready to rage at me for dragging the file back. You know what? I'm doing it just for you. It gives you something to complain about. This is Type 321 stainless steel tool wrap. It provides corrosion resistance up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. If you need to go higher than that, you would use a 309 high temp that goes up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The most challenging part of this is not cutting yourself. I try to make it with leather gloves in the past and I just can't do it. So you just gotta be really careful. Resist the temptation to swipe the ends with your finger because it'll cut you worse than a knife would. All of the edges get double folded. Fortunately, I didn't need any blood transfusion this time. If you want a nice finish, you must remove all of the oil and grease from the parts. A little piece of paper in the pouch will ignite and consume most of the oxygen in the pouch. It's really important that 
initial phase of heat treating, you minimize oxygen exposure or you'll have that ugly, rough, scaly finish on the part. This is as big as I can fit in my heat treating oven. Not too bad. This is Hot Shot 360 oven. I always put a scrap piece of metal in there so that I can use it to heat the quenching water. My tap water coming out of the ground is about 45 degrees Fahrenheit and it's kind of cold and it'll shock the part. So that part will bring the water temperature up to about 80 degrees. One of the resources that I like to use is Hudson Tool Steel. They have all kinds of heat treating, uh, tempering data for various hardenable materials on the website. We'll be soaking at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour and then we'll bake at 1450 for 40 minutes and then we'll quench and temper at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. That will yield about 55 Rockwell C hardness. And this is when I remember I forgot the safety glasses. Sometimes opening the pouches don't go as smoothly as you like. That's alright. You can always pop it back in the oven for a few more minutes and the temperature will come back right up. When you quench, it helps to put the part in straight down, not sideways, because if you put it sideways, it will bow. I had to get a bigger bucket because, well, the big bar wouldn't fit in it. Straight out of the oven, the finish looks beautiful. All those blue spots reminds me of antique firearms. The file obviously scrapes the finish off, but it does skate over the material. Would you just look at that? I put them back in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about two and a half hours. That will temper the material pretty good and this is the finish I got. Nice and even, no uh, scales to speak of. It's really smooth. And that's all from the tool wrap and the little piece of paper. It just gives you a really nice finish. Now I thought about taking it to the bench grinder and buff it on the Scotch-Brite wheel, but I'm really liking this natural uh, heat treated uh, finish. So what I'm going to do is put some light oil on it and that'll prevent it from corrosion. But uh, let's look at how these tool uh, high speed steel bits fit. The eighth inch is a nice snug fit. You never know uh, if the, the metal will move from the heat treating process uh, from all the stress relief and all that. This one worked out good. 3 16th inch. It is also a good finish on both bars. I did run into a little bit of a problem with the quarter inch on here. It was really tight. I, I had to... Uh, tap it in with the mallet and that's just too tight. So what I ended up doing is I use quarter inch high speed steel end mill uh, on a handheld drill and I just lightly worked it through and 
things loosen up pretty well. It's pretty tight, but you can do it by hand. So it is perfect. Stare at tool and instrument oil. Well, here it is with the light coat of oil. It's beautiful. Grinding this bit on the deco grinder was a bit of a challenge because, well, it's not designed to grind relief on both sides. Left side, yes, right, no. So, you know, it's mainly designed to grind cutters for your milling machine. Um, there's no mechanism to tilt uh, at the correct angle on the right side. So I basically had to just rotate the collet manually and hold it at 12 degrees with my hand so it doesn't rotate as I ground it. But it turned out all right. With a Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder, that would have been an easy job. So I can't wait to get that going. Also, because this is a new diameter boring bar, I also had to make an adapter sleeve. Now, I didn't film this because, well, I have a video dedicated for that. I'll put a link. Uh, above where I made different diameter sleeves. This was cold blued using uh, Brownells Oxfo finish and to be honest I can't tell just by looking at it I wouldn't be able to tell which is which the cold blue and heat treat finish so they both look really great I bet you wouldn't be able to tell if I didn't tell you either so I'm really happy about that so we're finally ready to make a new nut for the grinder and hopefully that'll be uh, in the next video. Those bars turned out really nice. I'm really excited to give them a try. So next video, hopefully we'll make a new lead screw nut. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.